It looks kind of crooked. Praise the Lord, everybody. Uh, forgive me. I'll adjust the camera here. I think that's straight. I must have bumped it. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. It's happy Sunday, everybody. Praise the Lord. Happy Sunday, everybody. All God's people. This is Winfield Pentecostal Assembly coming at you. Hallelujah. For Sunday school. Today is the 24th of June, July 7, 24, 22. And this is is our weekly Sunday school lesson. Forgive me, but I make some adjustments. Praise the Lord, everybody. Me. All right. We made our adjustments. And so we're happy to be with you today. Um, just a way of announcements. Um, if you are in the Crown Point, Maryville, Gary, Lowell, Hebron, Valparaiso, uh, Hammond, East Chicago, uh, Maryville area. We want to invite you to come worship with us. I printed off a couple of flyers for you. I want you to come and worship with us uh, September the 4th at 5 p.m. There's a special service. We're having our first guest speaker from out of town come. Uh, his name is Evangelist uh, Jonathan Hudson. He's coming to be with us, and it's going to be a very special service. It's going to be a very high time in the Lord, and we're really looking for miracles uh, to occur, to be honest with you. Uh, everywhere he's been, uh, he has developed a reputation that the anointing of special gifts and healings and deliverances follow him. The Lord uses him greatly. And so we're looking forward to a really, really good service. I'm so excited. Uh, we were blessed to have him come and want you to come be with us. We don't be selfish and keep them all to ourselves. <laughs> want you to come be with us, come worship with us and come partake of the blessings of the Lord. You will not be uh, uh, disappointed. I guarantee you that. Uh, if you are, I guarantee I give you your money back. <laughs> so we invite you to come be with us in Jesus name. Uh, we will be also having service this evening at 5 p.m., 7416 East 109th Avenue in Crown Point, Indiana. That's 7416 uh, East 109th Avenue in Crown Point, Indiana. Uh, now, now you'll see that we're actually located in a town called Winfield, even though we have a Crown Point mailing address, and it's just that as a mailing address. Uh, that's a GPS address. That's how you find us. But we're physically located in, in an emerging town called Winfield, and we share a building uh, with Christ Presbyterian on the uh, uh, marquee. So uh, we invite you to come out and worship with us. Don't be uh, dismayed by um, the location or, or, or whatnot. We're in the building. We're in the town. We're in the building. We are here in Jesus' name. God is moving. God is doing great works. And we're just excited and, and, and blessed of the Lord and humbled by his presence. We invite you to come and share that with us. Um, uh, we also have um, a Bible study every Friday night at 7.30 p.m. Same address, 7416 East 109th Avenue, Crown Point, Indiana, 46307. 7.30 every night, every Friday night. Come and be with us. If you'd like to give to this ministry, you want to do one or two things. You can send us a, you can send it to us in the mail, money order a check, and you want to make that out to, uh, I'm about to say Christ Presbyterian. You want to make that out to Winfield Pentecostal Assembly, um, uh, the check or money order. Uh, any amount is accepted, and we thank you for it. Uh, and if you need that address, you could just email me at wpassembly at outlook.com. That's wpassembly at outlook.com. And then I can give you our mailing address because it's different than the place we worship. Uh, but if you're a digital person and you, you want to do it right away, get it out the way. Uh, if the word that we've shared been a blessing to you, if you've been blessed, we invite you to uh, make a donation. 
um, because it helps. It supports this ministry and allows us to do uh, the work of the Lord. It takes money to get things done. Like I got to print off about 30 of these flyers. Uh, It takes money. Um, The template, I had to pay for that. It takes money. And even uh, the people coming to play, they're coming from out of town. Um, And I would like to be able to cover their gas. It takes money. I'm just giving you an idea. I know a lot of times ministries don't go in. I've never heard anyone ever tell from the pulpit or that, you know, what it takes to make everything. When you walk into the building that, you know, is I'm going to tell you what doesn't happen. Angels do not come on Saturday night (laughs) and clean the church, fix the plumbing, uh, run the board, uh, run the audio board, uh, send out. Uh, utility payments, building payments, or whatever. Little angels will come do that on Saturday night. It's people that come and do that. Um, and the little angels will come down with bags of money on Saturday nights and leave it in the church like a pelican. <laughs> okay? Like a stork. They don't do that. Uh, God commanding a blessing upon those that bless his work. So when you bless the work of God, you receive a blessing in return. And uh, the blessings are multiplied. So if the blessings are multiplied, then surely the commandment to give is also warranted. Uh, So don't believe the hype that's going around that you don't have, that God doesn't have a number. God does have a number. He's got a number with everything. He has a standard. God has a standard. He wants a tithe, a tenth of everything that you've been increased with to bless. And when we do, well, I'm not going to get into that. Uh, But we we invite you to give. (laughs) And just know that whatever you give, it matters from the heart what you give. And God blesses what you give from the heart. All right? No matter what the amount is. Uh, You can go to an app called Givelify. G-I-V-E-L-I-F-Y. You can also go to the same place uh, on the web. Uh, G-I-V-E-L-I-F-Y, Givelify, and uh, Givelify.com, and look for Winfield Pentecostal Assembly and make your donation. God bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. Now, we can get to the meat and potatoes. We got all of the, um, we got all the, um, we got all of the, um, Preliminary uh, announcements out of the way. We can get to our lesson. Um, our lesson is coming out of, hold it up for them. Um, God's Word for Life. We get this book off of PentecostalPublishingHouse.com. Um, you're welcome to re- get it at yourself. If you would like for me to send you a digital copy, copy of the lesson, I will. Just email me at WPAssembly at Outlook.com. Uh, if you have been a uh, giver to this ministry and I have not sent you this hard copy book, let me know. I will send you a copy um, and, and you're welcome to get the copy of your own. However, you know, you want to keep up with us because uh, I know you guys on YouTube are getting this after we we uh, post it uh, on Sunday. Um, but if you would like to keep up, if you would like a past lesson, uh, if you would like a future lesson or current lesson, just let me know. I send it to you free of charge. Uh, but we are looking, we're coming out of the series, God is our refuge. And today's lesson is 2.3, uh, July, the, 2. Oh, yeah. three, uh, July the 24th, page 4 or 402. And it's coming out of uh, two places. Uh, it's coming out of, lesson text is coming out of Psalms 46, 1 through 11. And 2 Chronicles 32, 1 through 8. Uh, We're going to read the focus verse at 46 and 1 of Psalms, division 46 and 1, Psalms 46 and 1. We're going to read that verse and that one verse only. And then we're going to jump to 2 Chronicles 32, 1 through 8. All right. So let's read the focus verse together. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you. We bless you and we praise you. You are great and holy. None like you, none stand beside you, none give you counsel. You're sovereign, you have all power, you have all knowledge, and you have all ability. And 
and you're awesome in everything you do. You do nothing by accident. Great is your faithfulness. Great is your love towards us. Oh God, we bless you. We bless your name. We honor you. We honor your name. We pray that you will be in this lesson. We pray that you will help us and strengthen us. We pray that the people that read this, that hear this and watch this, have an open heart to receive and that the word will find a good home to grow in their, in their lives and it will become a part of them in Jesus' name. Amen. Jesus' name. Jesus' name. Huh, I pray this word finds good place. We need this word in these times. God is our refuge. That means it's our hiding place. Yeah. And in the same time, I feel the Holy Ghost starting to move upon me even now as I speak. Hallelujah. At the same time, he is our refuge. He's our hiding place. He's our place of protection. He is our strength. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And so uh, we're going to read the lesson text together. Psalms 46 and 1. It reads, God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. All right. And then we're just going to skip to... Um, Second Chronicles, the 32nd chapter, and we're going to read uh, verses 1 through 8. After all that Hezekiah had so faithfully done, Sennacherib, king of Assyria, came and invaded Judah. He laid siege to the fortified cities, thinking to conquer them for himself. I'm reading out of the NIV. I actually, I'm going to change it. I like reading. I'm starting to like reading out of the NIV because it reads just a little bit easier for some of us. Mm -hmm. Um. Verse 2, when Hezekiah saw that Sennacherib had come and that he intended to wage war against Jerusalem, he consulted with his, did I change it? I thought I changed it. He consulted with his officials and military staff about blocking off the water from the springs outside the city, and they helped him. They gathered a large group of people who blocked all the springs and the streams that flowed through the land. And they were thinking, it doesn't say this. Why should the kings of Assyria come and find plenty of water? They said. Then he worked hard, repairing all the broken sections of the wall and building towers on it. He built another wall outside that one and reinforced the terraces of the city of David. He also made large numbers of weapons and shields. He appointed military officers over the people and assembled them together Assembled them, assembled them before him in the square at the city gate and encouraged them with these words. Be strong and courageous. Do not do not be afraid or discouraged because of the king of Assyria and the vast army with him. For there is a greater power with us than with him. With him is only the arm of flesh, but with us is the Lord our God to help us and to fight our battles. And the people gained confidence from what Hezekiah, the king of Judah, said. You know, as I sit here and I think about it. So. Hezekiah was not like his dad, King Ahaz, before him. King Ahaz was crooked, uh, was uh Crooked is not even a word. I love the way the connection of the lesson broke it down. Hezekiah, the new king, watched as his father, Ahaz, was buried. Hezekiah could not have been more different from his father, whose rule over wicked. Judah had, thankfully, huh? He was wicked. Okay. Is that... Go ahead. I know he was wicked, but I anyway... You made me lose my place. Um, Ahaz had been more wicked and did that and did not that which was right in the sight of the Lord. That's found in Second Chronicles 28. Ahaz had forsaken the Lord and worshiped the gods of the surrounding nations, um, even offering children as burnt sacrifices. So that's why I said he was beyond corrupt. Ahaz had gone so far as to gather together the vessels of the house of God and cut in pieces the vessels of the house of God, shut up the doors of the house of the Lord, and made altars in every corner of Jerusalem. And in every, in every several city of Judah, he made high places to burn incense unto other gods and provoked the anger of the Lord of his fathers. That's found in Second Chronicles 28. 
But in the height of his idolatry, Ahaz died and Hezekiah came to the throne and did that which was right in the sight of the Lord. Uh, long before Ahaz died, Hezekiah had begun making plans for overturning his father's idolatrous practices. Once in power, Hezekiah first reopened the temple. He then gathered priests and Levites and commanded them to consecrate themselves for service in the temple and to purify it and restore the sacrifices. As it restored right worship, Hezekiah also eliminated false worship and removed the altars from Jerusalem. The crown of his restoration was a two-week-long celebration of Passover. After this, he commanded that all the altars and high places be destroyed throughout Judah. And thus did Hezekiah throughout all Ju Judah and wrought that which was good and right and truth before the Lord his God. And in every work that he began in the service of the house of the Lord and in the law and in the commandments to seek his God, he did it with all his heart and prospered. That's Second Chronicles 31, 20 through 21. So. Um, it would seem right, and I like this, that God would continually bless Hezekiah for his devotion and that his reign would, would be once of peace and prosperity. For many years it was. But in the 14th year of Hezekiah's reign, a terrible report came to him. The mighty Assyrians, brutal empire builders, had invaded and were bent on destroying Jerusalem. How could this be? Hezekiah was beginning to experience the fact that pure devotion does not mean trouble feed prosperity. But he was also about to experience what he had always believed. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. And, and that's something that I think we, oh, you know, this morning I preached on Job and um, his problems, um, and one of the things that always has to remind, I'm reminded of is that Job did nothing to deserve the trouble that came upon him. Though he was not a sinless man, he was a righteous man. And, and though, um, and he did um, exercise um, that which was right in the sight of the Lord. But it wasn't because of his prosperity. It was because his heart was always right with God. And God knew that. And God knew that Job served God from his heart and from no other um, motivation. And so uh, here Hezekiah is finding his way the other way. Mm -hmm. He is turning the, the mindset of the people back to the living God. And because of that, God had blessed him with prosperity and peace. But uh, that is to change. And, you know, this is such as life is that uh, every time we enter into a season of prosperity and peace, we should anticipate that season to just do that, be a season and that it end. And that sometimes that, that it will be a time when things are very bad and very rough. Sometimes we enter into those seasons, those dry seasons, those haunting seasons before we enter into the land of prosperity and peace. Because what God is really actually doing is preparing us to possess the land. He's present, prefer, pre preparing us to possess the blessing that he wants so desperately to bless us with. A lot of times we don't understand the troubles we go through. We think it's it's, it's because God hates us. And really what it is, he loves you so much that he challenges your, your maturity with, with trials and tribulations. He allows sicknesses. He allows financial problems. He allows job problems. He allows, he allows problems to uh, rise up and plague you and distress you. Huh? Because he's trying to perfect you. And unfortunately, y'all, there is no other way to grow in Christ than it to be painful. Growth in anything is painful. It requires you to extend past yourself and find something bigger than yourself in order to accomplish it. Because if it was within your power, if it was within your within your grasp, if it was within your wheelhouse, then truly you would not need God. You would be able to handle it by yourself. If you would be able to heal yourself, if you would be able to work out your own legal problems. Why do we have legal, 
Uh, why do we have specialists in different forms of life? We have lawyers to handle our legal problems. We have doctors to handle our health. We have accountants to handle our finances. We have we have specialists, and see that because you cannot be what God is. See, mm-hmm. you must be able uh, to know who God is, because. Truly, in the scriptures, we see without any hesitation and without any varying lessing of degrees that God is everything to everyone all the time. He can be your he can be your doctor to you and then go down your street and be a lawyer to someone else. He can completely and, and completely and completely and then completely eradicate every single problem that you have with just the voice from his lips. See, Mm -hmm. because he's God. It doesn't matter what the problem is. He has all power, all knowledge. In fact, everything that we know comes from him. He illuminates the minds of men and women and gives them insight and revelation and divine instruction into all things. Now that's not found in the scriptures written like that, but that's what I understand the scripture to say. That in, in the totality, a paraphrasing of the scripture and a, a doctrine that God has given knowledge to man to do what little bit we knew before man walked around in animal skins. Now God has taught us how to take plants and weed them so finely it looks, it wears like a garment, huh? Mm-hmm. Now where did that knowledge and that info come from? That came from God. So we know that God is everything to everyone at all the time. You need a specialist, but you may need a doctor, but God, but, but God doesn't, doesn't need to consult anyone. He, he is the end all be all. Now he may use a doctor to help you get your healing. He may, he may use a lawyer to help you get your, 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 your justice. He may use, he may use the, the, the established protocols that we have set up. And then sometimes he allows those doors to be closed and none to be open just so he can remind you, I am yet God. I operate outside the boundaries that you have set up. I operate outside the channels that you set up. I operate outside the systems that you have set up. You got medicine? Well, I'm divine. I'm the manufacturer. I got the instruction manual. You just discovering how it works. I've made it so I know how it works intricately. Uh, I can go in and touch your body in a way that leaves people befounded and befuddled. Why? Because I made you with my own hands hands and breathe in you my own essence and because of that you are mine whether you like it or not he said that in his work he said behold all souls are mine and i'm not I, i'm not paraphrasing that he literally said that and so we can find comfort that no matter what we face no matter what we go through no matter what challenges stand in front of us no matter good bad no matter we've done it to ourselves or someone is doing it to us god is yet in control And so Hezekiah finds himself in this place Mm -hmm. where he did nothing to deserve the trouble that has found at his doorstep. And I hate that they stopped where they stopped in their reading, because I'm going to tell you something. This story gets so much more better when the chapter stretches on. Oh, I preached this chapter at least once, probably more. It is one of my most favorite favorite things to read in times of trouble. Oh my God. Oh, I'm not even going to get excited about it. Just thinking about it. I might run ahead and I might run ahead of myself and and give away next week's lesson because I don't know if it's in next week's lesson. But um, what we do know is that um, We could read Psalms 46, 11, but it really just, it really just, it just, just, it just repeats that God is our refuge and our strength and he's a help in a time of trouble. Um, so we know that Ahaz was bad. Hezekiah was good. I mean, Hezekiah went through and he tore down all the, all of the worship and all of the evil practices. And, you know, I see a lot of the same things today. Mm -hmm. You know, we haven't closed the doors to the church to the point, but, you know, that day is coming. Um, 
we we have been living in a 2000 year cycle of prosperity and and I say that because as a church as a doctrine of the church grew so did the people and the people went from being persecuted to being venerated mm -hmm. um to be called a Christian was a slur it was like using the n word uh to black people it was a slur to be called a Christian um and they were persecuted. They were done. They were tortured for being a Christian. And then you fast forward a thousand plus years. And now people walk around here calling themselves Christians and they're not even living it. They're not living it. They think because they were born in America and that God is on the money. Mm -hmm. You know, I just saw that. It's entitled. You know, we, we put it on the money in God we trust. Yeah. But. Isn't that funny how we put in God we trust on our money mm -hmm. and really the God that we trust is the money? The money. Yeah. You know? And, 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 and here's the funny thing. You know, that, that symbol on our money is not even God. You have no symbol. No man has seen God. You can't symbolize God. I mean, you could put a cross on the money. You know what I'm saying? But when you look and see what's on the money, it's really a, a pagan symbol. Mm -hmm. That pyramid with the eye, that's a pagan symbol. That's not God. Mm -hmm. That's not God. That's a pagan symbol. That's a pagan worship God. That's not, that's not the God that I'm talking about. We put on our money and God we trust, but the money, the God that we trust is actually the money itself. And you got people that are arguing, saying we want to take in God, we trust off the money. Why? We don't trust in God. It's, it's, it's symbolic. It, it, it's just words. We don't really trust in God. We trust in that money. I think that's why somebody put it on there. You know, to say in God we trust because the God that we trust is the God of this money. Not the God of, not the God of this world, not the God of the universe, but the God of this power, this is this make this this dollar bill makes me God. This this hundred dollar bill makes me God. And that's really what it's symbolized. And it's symbolizing the God of this world, not the God of heaven and earth, the God of mankind. That money can make me God. God money can make me be somebody I I'm really not. And people will worship me because I got more of it than they got. And here's a funny thing. The only reason why I got it is because they gave it to me. Yeah. The gods of this world, we make them gods. Mm -hmm. We make them gods. And to the point where they, they get bold and they change their names into God. Yeah. Yeezy. Do you even know what that means? Do you know what he's really telling you? He's telling you he's Jesus. He's telling you that. He changed his name to Yeezy. That's, that's a play on Jesus. And he changed it. He ain't the only one. There's been, there's, been, there's been musical artists throughout history that have changed their names to mimic God. Ja rule. Ja. Ja is what you call it for God. Uh, uh, what, what language is that? Uh, ja. I'm trying to think what language is that, but it means God. I can't remember the name, but it means God. Ja rule. We think, oh man, that's a cool rule. That's a cool name. No, he's telling you God rules, and he's telling you I'm that God, and he ain't the only one. There've been there've been hundreds. What you talking about Arabic? I it, I don't think it's I'm not no I don't think it's Arabic because um it, it I don't think it's Arabic, but I'm just saying. We make these people gods. And Ahaz, all he did, and guess what? The people followed him. He planted worship, all he planted fake God worship and then closed off real worship and put fake worship all around. And that day is coming around again. Because just like the people then, the people rather believe a lie than believe the truth. Mm -hmm. And that's where we are in today. That's where we're in today. So then when I read that, I just see the similarities of the day coming right back up, mm -hmm. you know, but Hezekiah, he stood strong. Mm -hmm. 
And he knew that it was wrong. And that just baffles me that generations of kings did wrong. One followed his father and his father was wrong. And you see the succession of kings and you see the succession of kings. Uh, they followed their father that was wrong and they did wrong. And then you hit one that just said, I'm not going to be like him. I'm going to be right. And uh, let me flip because it might be somebody on the feed. Oh, yeah. Oh, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, Sister Dickerson. Praise the Lord, There's lady. no sound. Oh. I'm glad I looked. I don't know why there's no sound. It's on. Yeah, it's on, but I don't know why there's no sound. Can you can you hear us? I don't know how to fix it. Oh, she said something else. Okay. I don't know what to do. Mm. I don't know what happened. I don't know what happened. It's not on mute, is it? No, because look, as I talk, you can see it's 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 I'm yeah, I am talking. It I don't, it might be on your end because I'm seeing Oh, okay, okay, okay. Yeah, because I'm seeing my words transcribed below the, um, okay, you, you can hear us. Amen. 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 We're really glad to see you, Sister Hickerson. Um, Praise him. <laughs> amen. Really glad to see you. Amen. Okay. I lost my track, my train of thought. <laughs> I lost my train You're of thought. talking about Hezekiah. Yeah, Hezekiah was... See, because I'm trying to keep from getting into what happened after this. Yeah. Because what happens after this is just awesome. You know, I I, I personally love it. And it's one of my most favorite things to, to teach and preach from because it moves me personally. So I'm trying to hold back from giving away the whole thing. Um, but um, um, his, I'm trying to set up so you can understand. You know, he went through... He cleaned out all the things that his um, his father has set up. And I find I always found that strange how. Um, oh, wow. OK, so she's talking. To, oh, no. Oh, Sister Hickerson. OK, I'm going to call you after this. OK. What happened? What's this up there? So we got to remember we're recording for other people, too. Um, I don't want to get sidetracked. Um, but we, we, we want to, um, we, we don't want to get off point that, um, Ahaz had done so much evil and had made, um, um, so many alliances and done so much wrong. Um, but Hezekiah had turned it around. And oftentimes we think that, you know, he done right. And it seems like, it seems like when you're doing what's right, that trouble come. It okay. seemed that way. Um, I want to, I've had people say this, you know, I even had one of my members ask me just last week, why me? You know, and I really wanted to say, why not you? I mean, 
Oh, why would you think that your life, <laughs> why would you think that you get to live carefree and trouble free? You know what I'm saying? Like the rest of us is supposed to, this is why I know that wasn't what, that wasn't what she was really trying to say. What she was really saying was, why do I got to go through so much? And there's so many reasons why. Sometimes we are disobedient to God and God is putting pressure on us. Sometimes we're being perfected. See, that's the flow that I, I was, God was filling. Sometimes we're being perfected. And, and sometimes we're being perfected before we enter into our prosperity season. Because had we been in the prosperity season without perfection and not perfection, like you done, you do no wrong. Perfection that you're mature. That's what it means in the Greek in the Bible. It means mature. It doesn't mean without fault. It means mature. So had you not been mature enough or said it another way, had you not been much strong enough, had you not been uh, mature enough to handle the challenges of being in that prosperity season, God has to work on you. And you you looking at it like God is doing something wrong. No, God's doing everything right. And the more you resist and don't and don't draw closer to God, then you don't understand why you being why you being in that problem, why the problem is always surrounding you. You seem like just as you deal with one problem, another two more prop up. You say, well, you're being strengthened. You not even realize that. See, had you not been strengthened, you would have gave up. See, you keep looking at it the wrong way. Sometimes we look at the wrong way. We look at the trouble and we're like, why am I in so much trouble? None of us like trouble when we understand that, yes, I'm in trouble, but I have not been consumed. See, we we would have not looking at the fact that the trouble has not broken us. We are oh, not yeah. looking at that. We're looking at the trouble coming because the flesh does not want the trouble. But see, oh, if we yeah. could just come to the house of the Lord sometimes, huh? Uh, if we could just sometimes get on our knees, huh? And then we start to follow the protocols that God put in place. Then we understand we come out of our flesh that don't like nothing uncomfortable. We come out of our flesh that only wants to be pleasured. We come out of our flesh that only wants to be happy. We come out of our flesh that only wants what peace, tranquility, and lucidity. We come out of our flesh and we come into the realness of life. There's spirits flowing all through around us. Spirits walking in your house. Spirits on your job. Spirits everywhere. And when we can come out of our little, little, little fleshly, little flo floaty, floaty world and come into the realness, the raw and grittiness of spiritual warfare, and we understand that God is trying to do something in the time that we're in, and when we understand that God is moving and he's using you to prepare it, then you start to say, oh, Lord, okay. It's all right. Hallelujah. Oh, I'm understanding now. I'm in the spirit now. I'm in my flesh. I don't like what I'm hearing and feeling, but my spirit reminds me I'm yet equipped. Why? Because I've not been consumed. Hallelujah. Oh, sometimes the consummation is upon us and the walls look like they're bowing in under pressure. But the God we serve is just standing there as a bulwark and keeping the walls from collapsing. Why? Because he is our refuge and our strength. And our strength. The walls will not bend and break and fall. Why? Because he is our refuge in the walls and our strength within them. Hallelujah. He's in the walls, hallelujah. He is yet strengthening the walls, hallelujah. And he is our refuge in the walls. He is our refuge and the strength that keeps the walls from falling. Ah, though the winds blow and the waters rise, they will not overtake. Why? Because he is our refuge and our strength. And when we understand why he is our refuge and our strength and why we are in trouble all the time and why he is allowing things to come upon us, then we come out of our little, see, and when we don't come down to the house of the Lord, we don't find that out. No. And we don't ever get on our knees outside of coming to the house of the Lord, we don't find that out. Hallelujah. See, when we don't reach out to God, we don't find that out. We don't understand that God is yet moving, and we miss it. Yes. And we start to act out in our flesh, act out in sin, uh, 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 be disobedient, be uh, uh, does not keep our commitment, etc., etc., etc. And the whole time, 
God is saying, you know, if you just stay right here a little while longer, I know it don't feel good, but it don't feel good because you, you're not looking at me. Hallelujah. Uh, just come just a little closer. If you come a little closer, he, didn't he say, didn't he say he is our refuge, but Hallelujah. he is only our refuge when you come inside. Hallelujah. You got to come inside first. If you just come, just come, a, come, come. Come a little closer. You out here. Come, come where I can hold. Hope. Come, come, no, come right here. Thank you. Because I got you. Thank you. Don't you understand? You haven't been consumed because I got you. You looking at what's attacking you. You're not looking at the fact that you have endured it. Hallelujah. Bless you, my so called that she. You don't looking at the thing the wrong way. Thank you. You're looking at it all wrong sometimes. We do that. We do that. We do that. We look at it all wrong. Hallelujah. We do. We do. We do. Thank you. We look at it all wrong. We, 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 we see it and we get stressed. Yes. And the Lord is dealing with me heavily in this season. And these lessons are so appropriate. It's as if God knew what we were going to be doing when these lessons came online. Yes. To strengthen us. To remind us, you, you mine. You, you mine. You mine. Hallelujah. You Thank mine. You. And I am your refuge <laughs> and your strength. Hallelujah. Thank I'm your hiding place and I'm your help while you hide. <laughs> Go ahead. He is our refuge. Yes. And our strength. Thank you, Jesus. So, I'm tired now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad I recorded that because I actually want to go back and, and listen to that myself. I, you know, it's so beautiful how the Lord comes and visits us. Um, he is our refuge. He, 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 he hides us under the wings of his, of his safety. Under his wings of mercy. And we, we oftentimes do not see the fact that we have not been consumed because he is yet with us. And he is yet with us because we are his and he loves us. And when we understand why we're in the storm, what this storm means to us. Because listen, with one storm, God can do a different many of things. One storm, he with the same pandemic, he pushed uh, he he bought home those on the labor on on the battlefield, and then bought new ones on that had been straggling. Folk was looking at. In one hand, he caused a pandemic to to look like it, it was bringing uh, turmoil to one end of the world. But on in, in, on the Christian side, he was strengthening the saints by bringing people. Hallelujah. Some people was working so much they they never had time to come to church, you know, and they knew they should have been. But they were so consumed with trying to pay the bills and trying to make the money. And then they got laid off because of the pandemic. Then they had, oh, well, uh, maybe I ought to pray. Maybe I ought to find my knees. Maybe I ought to bruise my knees a little more. And, 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 and so with one thing, God does many things. With one move, when he shifts his weight from his left foot to his right foot, that is just a, a great trans, transfer of weight on in God. You know, and when he shifts his weight, everything starts to change. And Hallelujah. so God moves like that. And when we know, when we understand this, and what we need to do is just use that as an invitation to get closer. Yes. Oh, I love Hezekiah. Thank you, Jesus. Do you know how close to God you had to be? When you can look. When you could pray to God and say, wait a minute, haven't I done what you asked me to do? Haven't I done what was right in your eyes? Have I not pleased you? Have I not? Have I not? And before you can get through praying, God sent an answer from the same word, from the same mouth of the one who pronounced an ending. He said, look, everything is well. <laughs> I'm going to give you 15 more years. Hallelujah. I mean, what kind of, do you imagine how close you got to be? You could talk to God. Can you talk to God like that? Hallelujah. Can you talk to God and say, Lord, 
Can you bring out your resume before God? Listen, remember who you're talking to. Remember who you're talking to. He is our refuge and our strength. The mind to even do that which was right comes from God. Yes. But when you can turn your face to the wall and tell the Lord, say, Lord, I've done all I know how to do. Thank you. Don't you remember? When you can bring up what you've done before God and then carry weight, do you know how close to God you got to be to do that? Hallelujah. Do you know what you got to do when you can bring up your resume before God and it, it makes him amend his earlier decision? Mm. <laughs> you know what kind of weight you got to have with God? You know what kind of rank you got to have with God? <laughs> what kind of rank you got to have with God to do that? Because trouble draws you in closer. You know how you can get that? Well, I'm, I'm trying to keep from running down that road. I want I want to tell a part of the story on Second Chronicles 32 so bad. I want to tell it. Oh, hey. Oh, hey. Oh, hey. I want to get into it because, man, listen, I, I'll be here another half hour. I'm going to stop. 21 minutes after the hour, we thank God for the message this morning. Um, uh, we thank God for uh, those of you that are watching now and those that will once I post this on YouTube, we pray that it be a blessing to you. If you have any questions, concerns, or uh, you want to give your offering through the mail or anything, please email me at wpassemblyoutlook.com. Um, if you have any, um, uh, if you want to worship with us and you're in the uh, area, please come and worship with us at 7416 East 109th Avenue in Crown Point, Indiana, in the town of Winfield, uh, and the building share with Christ Presbyterian. Uh, we especially invite you to come and be with us during our special service. Our first guest speaker from out of town is coming on September the 4th at 5 p.m. in the face of uh, evangelist uh, Jonathan Hudson. Uh, we pray that you come be with us. He has a very uh, special gift of laying on hands and uh, uh, deliverance and healing. So we invite you to come and worship with us that Sunday evening at 5 p.m. on September the 4th. Uh, 7416 East 109th Avenue. If you would like to give digitally, you can do so through the Givelify app, G-I-V-E-L-I-F-Y dot com and look for Winfield Pentecostal Assembly. And we thank you for your donations, those of you who have donated. We thank you for uh, all of your support and questions and, and uh, help. If you, uh, there's something I feel like I'm forgetting. But the Lord knows. We thank you. God bless you. God keep you. This is Winfield Pentecostal Assembly in Crown Point, Indiana. Today is the 24th of July, Sunday school lesson. Uh, God is our refuge and our strength. We're signing off. God bless you. God keep you in Jesus' name. Amen.